3. The Waif Mother The poor girl retired to her dismal kitchen and could not help weeping as she sat there, thinking over her sister's cruelty. Ashpuddle, Cinderella. I'm so alone, doomed to a life in solitary. The silence is deafening. I rail against the darkness, but yet there it is. And now there's the void staring me in the face, the yawning mouth of the abyss, the unending sense of loneliness and failure. I could not have possibly belonged to such a fine, upstanding family. Not me. Her journal entry could have been Cinderella's. I hate being so lonely. What is wrong with me? What is this feeling of desperation? Is it really God's will that I suffer, bereft of any male companionship? The despairing words were written in a woman's notebook. Angela left the journals for me to read, to help me understand her. It's hard when you're alone, not to feel annihilated. Oh, my lonely, aging body, loving so futilely, so lonesomely, this empty shell trying to love again. God, what indignities the flesh, soul, spirit endures. I won't be destroyed. I must somehow hold my breaking heart together so it can go on beating. The depth of her despair was frightening. I'm trying so hard to mend the broken pieces that I'm grabbing anything that looks like it might hold the glue. The words looked as if they were sliding off the page, going over the edge. She recorded how much alcohol she drank each night. Her handwriting reflected the level of intoxication. Angela was a borderline waif. The helplessness and hopelessness of the borderline waif distinguish her from other borderlines. She feels cast adrift, lost in the sea of her own despair. She is a delicate creature, easily injured, with sharp edges concealed beneath her fragile exterior. When Angela is shattered, her words can feel like shards of glass. Angela struggled to understand herself, her life, and her loneliness. The waif is frequently victimized and evokes sympathy and concern from others. Although she can be socially engaging, she can quickly turn on those she needs, leaving friends and family members perplexed. The waif projects her feelings of helplessness and victimization onto others. Discarded friends frequently ask themselves, what did I do to deserve this? Angela was a divorced mother who alternately indulged and neglected her children. Bouts of depression periodically consumed her, leaving her children feeling abandoned. The vicious cycle of depression and withdrawal reinforced feelings of failure and hopelessness. Angela felt undeserving of her children's love. All borderlines sensed that they could drown in their own feelings and struggle to survive. The waif grabs onto anything that might support her and keep her afloat. Traumatized by childhood abuse, abandonment, or neglect, she conceals her rage by sadness. When she is mishandled, her rage can take others by surprise. Following her mother's death, Angela lived with her aunt and uncle, where she felt like an unwelcome guest. When she was twelve, her uncle sexually molested her. Feelings of helplessness overwhelmed her, and fantasy became her escape. Books took her to fictional worlds where she discovered other lonely people like herself, heroes and heroines, and happy endings. Like many waifs, Angela created a secret fantasy life that she rarely revealed to others. Fantasy is safer than reality for the borderline waif. The loneliness, depression, and despair of the waif know no economic or historical boundaries. Charlotte Dupont wife of an heir to the massive DuPont armament and powder mill fortune of the 1800s, exhibited the traits of a borderline waif. Although the nature of her mental illness was not understood during her lifetime, her behavior revealed the telltale symptoms of BPD. On March 6, 1861, she wrote her aunt a letter that is striking in its similarity to Angela's journal entries. You know I have always disliked excessively to be alone. And now, Fanny, my cousin, so soon going to leave me, I will be entirely alone. This is very hard for me to bear, as I am very dependent upon company. Charlotte Dupont's suffering is palpable in her letter to another family member. I suppose I was born into darkness, so thick that no lights could penetrate. So I have groped, 
and stumbled in a slew of despond from which there is no extrication. May others be more fortunate. A relative described Charlotte as a butterfly with a sting. She could be temperamental, flirtatious, venomous, bored, agitated, and seriously depressed. She provoked arguments with her husband and became violent, flinging vases, tearing down curtains, scratching, kicking, and biting, after which she collapsed into a stupor. Charlotte Dupont was the mother of five children. Like Angela, she was an indulgent and loving mother, but frequently withdrew into depression. Eventually, Charlotte was sent to a Philadelphia asylum. After discharge, she returned home briefly, only to leave for a European trip. Upon returning to America, Charlotte discovered that a governess had physically abused her children during her absence. After promptly dismissing the governess, Charlotte collapsed, sobbing uncontrollably with grief and remorse. Her husband took her back to the asylum, moaning and shrieking like the lost soul she was, where she died on August 19, 1877. Of the many tragic aspects of Charlotte Dupont's life, none is more poignant than her utter despair over having failed to protect her children. Unable to care for herself, rejected by a powerful family, and grieving from familial losses in the Civil War, Charlotte died from her own brokenness. Her sense of personal failure, victimization, and rejection ultimately consumed her. The Waif's Dominant Emotional State Helplessness Cinderella obeyed, but she wept, for she too would have liked to go dancing. Cinderella Like a butterfly caught in strong winds, the Waif feels powerless to choose direction or focus. In social situations, she flits about, never connecting in depth. She can be inappropriately open, enticing others by too much self-disclosure, and then walking away with an air of indifference. She may fish for compliments and then reject them, seek attention and then hide, complain miserably, and then refuse help. The Waif leaves others feeling helpless. Unconsciously, she needs to stay helpless in order to feel safe. A patient once exclaimed, I can't allow myself to need your help and be in control at the same time. This painfully honest disclosure captures the waif's basic conflict. The paradox of the waif is that by accepting help, she loses control. The waif is a help-rejecting victim, and helplessness is a defense against closeness and loss. A biographer remarked of Princess Diana, one problem in offering Diana help was her combination of fragility and defensiveness. She wanted to be soothed, yet invariably rejected efforts to comfort her, especially when they came from Charles. Her silences, which often signaled reproach, were especially difficult to read, as they arose from Diana's inability to articulate what was troubling her. Time after time, family members throw life preservers to the waif and are bewildered when she throws them back. Standing on shore, those who love her wonder, does she want to drown? The daughter of a borderline waif wrote, Sadness pummels me into silence. I just don't know what to say to her anymore. She is my mother. Of course I love her. I'm just so, so tired of trying to save her. I can barely save myself. Joan Lashkar explains that borderlines who feel undeserving are prone to withdraw into isolation. The waif is so prone to depression and withdrawal that others may find her undependable and at times exhausting. During these periods of solitary confinement, she may self-mutilate or abuse substances. However, her self-destructiveness is hidden. If she self-mutilates, her scars are not likely to show. If she abuses alcohol, sex, drugs, or food, the behavior signifies resignation rather than the need for attention. When she wants to attract attention, she becomes hysterical. The waif seems unable to think through the consequences of her decisions. She sees herself as an incompetent failure and is overly dependent on the approval of others. She misinterprets innocuous comments as criticism and rejects those who are critical before they reject her. Rejection and abandonment trigger rage and depression. Although her rage may be directed at her children or partner, the waif blames herself for her misfortune. She feels marked, doomed, struck with interminable bad luck, and is susceptible to breakdown. 
Because she has no underlying foundation of self-worth, she cannot tolerate minor mistakes, inconsequential failures, or mild disappointments. As Masterson explains, unlike a healthy man or woman who says, well, this is one of those situations at which I'm not very good, the false self, the borderline, says, you are totally helpless and good for nothing. The waif's rich fantasy life leads her to read more into relationships with men than may exist. Therefore, she sets herself up for disappointment. Angela married her ex-husband when she was 18 in order to escape the loneliness of her life. Having survived victimization as a child, she believed it was safer to take what you can get, never expecting to really be loved. In relationships, she gave too much too soon. The waif allows herself to be exploited by men due to her desperate need to be loved. She may be unable to resist men who pay attention to her, regardless of their availability or appropriateness. Her vulnerability makes her an easy target for victimization. She may be openly or subtly seductive or misread male attention. The borderline waif is a hopeless romantic. Those who love her feel frustrated, annoyed, and occasionally outraged by her behavior. The waif's inner experience, victimization. She had to do all the work, getting up before daybreak, carrying water, lighting fires, cooking and washing. In addition, the sisters did everything they could to plague her. Cinderella. Like Cinderella, the waif learned that submissive behavior was the most adaptive response to an oppressive environment. She survived her childhood by resigning herself to a hopeless situation, and her sense of security became paradoxically tied to resignation. As an adult, the waif resigns herself to the worst possible outcome before it occurs. In some cases, she increases her chances of victimization. In others, her reactions can throw others off guard. A man with a gun approached a patient as she was leaving a store, promising not to shoot her if she followed him to his car. She spitefully replied, Look, if you're going to shoot me, just do it here. I'm not going anywhere with you. Her response startled the man, who expected her to comply out of fear. Instead, the gunman became frightened and fled from the store. In another situation, a patient broke up a fight between two men by stepping in between them. She said, Excuse me, would either one of you like for me to call the police? One of the bewildered men looked at her and said, Lady, you must be crazy. Because the waif has unreliable fear responses and feels compelled to rescue others, she can easily become a victim. She sees herself as a loser who has nothing to lose. The waif has difficulty taking care of herself and her belongings, therefore she is easily exploited. She feels incompetent, even though her intellectual capacity may be far above average. Because she relinquishes control too easily, she may die a victim's death. The waif's fragile demeanor evokes caretaking behavior from others. Friends and family members fear for her physical survival and may extend vast amounts of financial and emotional support. They grow annoyed with her inability to protect herself from repeated exploitation, mishaps, and preventable illness. Her children can feel suffocated by her inability to take care of herself. Like many waifs, Angela never learned to nourish herself emotionally and suffered from an eating disorder. Binging and purging reflected her shame and ambivalence about gratification. She simply could not take in or tolerate good feelings. She had to reject what she needed in order to protect herself from disappointment. She could not lose what she did not have. For the waif, having less feels safer than having more, as opposed to the borderline hermit who hoards and the queen who grabs. The waif picks at crumbs, never expecting her own piece of cake and will adamantly refuse it if offered. Although she rarely asks for what she wants, she is resentful when her needs are not met. The waif's vulnerability is apparent in her tentative demeanor. She has difficulty articulating her needs, is unnecessarily apologetic, and easily embarrassed. Because she does not trust others, she may identify more with children than with adults, with abandoned and neglected animals, or with victims of crime, disaster, or illness. Although she feels powerless to save herself, she feels compelled to save others. Characteristics of the waif mother Is too passive and permissive 
The waif is a passive, permissive mother who cannot see how her feelings of helplessness handicap her children. One waif mother purchased a keg of beer for her daughter's 15th birthday party and allowed her to drive the car without a permit or license. The daughter refused to help out around the house, flunked out of school, and lived off the mother's meager income. Although resentful, the waif mother was unable to recognize how she enabled her daughter's behavior. The waif's children may resent their mother's passivity or they may exploit it. Angela's daughter felt sorry for her mother and took over much of the housework. Her son, however, resented his mother's irresponsible behavior and was sometimes verbally abusive. Angela tolerated his behavior because she expected to be mistreated. The waif's children may question her judgment because she tolerates abuse. They may become overprotective because she is so easily victimized, choosing careers and helping professions such as medicine, social work, psychology, or psychiatry. As Ferenczi said, a mother complaining of her constant miseries can create a nurse for life out of her child. Some adult children emotionally and financially support their waif mothers. The waif's children can become victims themselves. The waif's poor judgment may expose her children to dangerous situations, placing them at risk for neglect and for sexual or physical abuse by unreliable caregivers. Car accidents or household accidents can occur during periods of emotional withdrawal. The safety of the waif's children, therefore, may depend on their ability to take care of themselves. Invalidates her own competence, tends to be underemployed. The waif does not see herself as competent, regardless of her level of education, intelligence, or employment. She sees herself as a failure, a belief that can become self-fulfilling. Her tendency to invalidate her own competency has a negative impact on young children who do not have the ability to distinguish reality from their mother's distorted beliefs. The waif's low self-esteem pervades all areas of her life, creating feelings of failure as a parent, a partner, and an employee. She is much brighter and more capable than she perceives herself to be and is often underemployed. Waifs are drawn to helping professions because they identify with those who are mistreated, disadvantaged, or oppressed. They tend to be dedicated employees who work long hours and are generally underpaid. They often feel trapped in their jobs and may be exploited by the corporations or companies for which they work. The waif's children may internalize the message of not being good enough and may underestimate their own competency. Although Angela's daughter, Sarah, had hoped to become a physician, Angela made no arrangements to finance her education. Sarah worked part-time in a nursing home during high school and eventually attended nursing school. The waif's underemployment can reduce financial resources and limit educational opportunities. Suffers from chronic or recurrent illnesses, makes frequent medical visits, or completely neglects her health. Parentified children feel responsible for their parents' well-being and repress their own emotional needs. Other children may resent their mother's dependency. Sarah was chronically anxious about her mother's physical complaints, whereas David was cynical and resentful. As adults, the waif's children may become either emotionally detached or consumed with worry. Charlotte DuPont's eldest daughter, Anna, was frequently assigned the role of caretaker for her four younger siblings. Charlotte's husband had a fatal aneurysm when he learned that his wife had died, leaving Anna and her siblings suddenly orphaned. Rather than being adopted by various family members, the children armed themselves with weapons and refused to be removed from their home. Anna was 17 when her parents died and insisted that she was capable of caring for the younger siblings. She did, in fact, prove to be a competent surrogate mother. Their biographer states, the unhappy circumstances in which they had been raised had knitted them together into a unit bound by mutual suffering and adversity. The waif's children learn how to care for themselves because their mother is overwhelmed by life. Uses drugs, alcohol, money, food, and or sex to self-soothe. The waif may cope with feelings of helplessness by abusing drugs, alcohol, food, money, and or sex. She is susceptible to addictive behavior because of her chronic need to reduce anxiety. Her all-or-nothing thinking results in widely fluctuating behavior that confuses her children. 
Angela's children were concerned about her poor judgment and disapproved of her seductiveness with men. When men took advantage of her either financially or sexually, her adolescent son could barely contain his resentment. When relationships ended, Angela plunged into deep depression and struggled with suicidal feelings. Usually, it was Sarah, her 12-year-old daughter, who worried the most at those times. David was angry and hurt that his mother would try to kill herself over some jerk and not even think about us, her own children. Some borderline waifs may be unconsciously seductive, while others may avoid any interactions with males that could be misinterpreted as sexual. Charlotte DuPont was described as flirtatious and seductive. Until they discovered that Charlotte could suddenly change her mood, first petulant, then accusing, and finally almost viperish, she would round on them, a burst of high color flooding her cheeks and a bright flashing in her dark eyes, and accuse them of going too far and wanting to make a fool out of her husband. Angela's journal entries indicated that she developed an addiction to alcohol as well as to prescription drugs. Sarah resented her mother's substance abuse and was strongly opposed to the use of alcohol and drugs among her peers. David, however, abused both alcohol and drugs and was arrested for possession of marijuana. Thus, Angela's chemical dependency had a profound but contradictory impact on her children. Some waif mothers may spend more money on their children than on themselves. Angela was chronically in debt and limited her therapy sessions to twice a month in order to provide her children with designer clothes. Some waif mothers cannot bear to see their children do without and may risk their own financial well-being to assure that their children are not deprived. They may impulsively indulge their children without considering the long-term consequences, failing to set aside money for their children's college education. The waif cannot allow herself the hope of being loved. She feels defective and worthless, expecting to be loved only superficially, if at all. The single, divorced waif mother may seek sexual relationships with men in the attempt to self-soothe. With each new man Angela met and dated, she defended herself against expected disappointment. Is it really then good to be alive? I can see, oh, but a little yet. But I can see a possibility that there is yet a life that is worth dying for. I may not ever experience it, but it glimmers, it glistens, it yet exists. The waif may be aware of her neediness, her desperation for love, but she is unable to contain her anxiety, which eventually drives others away. She gives herself completely, then finds herself alone, abandoned. Angela wrote, Sometimes death does seem an acceptable alternative to the endless pain from what has become an almost boring repetition of situations. The waif's attempts to self-soothe through compulsive use of alcohol, drugs, money, food, or sex lead to increased guilt and depression. Abandonment triggers suicidal feelings and desperate acts that can endanger the waif and her children. When faced with rejection or abandonment, the waif experiences deep depression, which can include suicidal feelings or self-mutilation. The waif may self-mutilate as punishment or to escape emotional pain. She may literally beat up on herself, cut herself, hit her head against the wall, or pull out her own hair. Abandonment can also trigger an overdose of alcohol or medication or other impulsive behavior. Some waifs may seek escape by driving at high speeds. Tragically, some children witness or rescue waif mothers from life-threatening situations. The waif's fear of abandonment distorts her perceptions of interactions with others, and she frequently misinterprets interactions as rejection. One of Angela's journal entries illustrates the extreme sensitivity to abandonment and the sudden plunge into despair. He said he would call, and he didn't. He didn't actually say he would call today, but I took it, was hoping that's what he meant. You must face the darkness again, unafraid and ready to do battle with it. It is coming, has come. Those who do not understand the intensity of the waif's feelings may accuse her of being melodramatic, an error that could be fatal. Like many borderlines, Angela did not understand why relationships were so difficult for her. My relationships are like balls I was supposed to outfield. 
they'd rarely come my way. And when they did, I'd be so excited I'd grab too soon or overrun or misjudge or otherwise try to scramble for it, only to have it slip through my fingers at best and at worst to have it hurt badly because I didn't have enough practice to know how to catch it. Abandonment can trigger suicidal feelings in the waif. Angela's words describe the feeling clearly. Oh, God, there's no one, no one, and my death would be mourned by no one. The waif's tendency to forget her children, to discount their love for her, is evident in Angela's writing. She became convinced that she was a burden to them and believed that her children would be relieved if she died. The waif's children may fear for their mother's survival as well as their own. Shortly after Angela's husband announced his intention to divorce her, she loaded her two young children into the car and threatened to drive off a bridge. Although they were preschoolers at the time, David and Sarah recalled vivid memories of the experience. Adult children of waifs suffer from intense anxiety if their mothers were prone to such acts of desperation. It is important to remember, however, that not all waifs self-mutilate or experience suicidal tendencies. Nevertheless, rejection or abandonment can trigger impulsive behavior that is unintentionally life-threatening and can scare their children to death. Is alternately indulgent and negligent with her children. The waif feels undeserving of her children's love and is therefore indulgent and protective yet she is powerless to protect them from the pain that lives in her own heart. Some waif mothers have been known to relinquish custody of their children to their ex-husbands because they did not feel like good enough mothers. From their perspective, this is the ultimate act of self-sacrifice. From their child's perspective, it is abandonment. Like all borderlines, the waif is driven by her need to avoid abandonment. Thus, in her relationship with her children, she is likely to secure their attachment through unlimited gratification. Whereas other types of borderline mothers can be controlling and rigid in their interactions with their children, the waif relinquishes too much control and indulges them. As adults, her children may have difficulty interacting with authority figures, accepting no for an answer, or doing their fair share of work. Children who assumed the role of caregiver, however, may become compulsively self-sufficient. Attachment researchers claim that the majority of mothers who had unhappy attachment experiences do not break the cycle of passing on the effects of unhappy attachment experiences to their own children. The waif's pattern of attachment to her children is marked by the fear of losing them. She may develop an anxious enmeshment with them, which in turn can impair her children's ability to form healthy relationships as adults. Charlotte DuPont's son, Alfred, was described as sad and moody, driven into silence, and into himself by the awful tension around the house. What the waif's children need, of course, is a mother who takes care of herself as well as her children. Is more likely to deprive rather than indulge herself. Although Kernberg explains that deprivation may be a defense against the fear of suffering, for the waif, deprivation is a defense against the fear of hope. Hope hurts because it leads to disappointment. Angela explained, You cannot hope and then hope to survive, because you may not survive the hope or the dashing of it. The waif is a Spartan, a minimalist, who does not feel deserving of what she needs. Her inability to experience pleasure or gratification can annoy her children. Adult children may invite the waif mother on vacation, buy her new clothes, or take her out to dinner, only to discover that she refuses the offer or is unable to enjoy the experience. Eventually, her children may stop giving her invitations or gifts. Nothing they do makes her happy. Gunderson observes that borderlines frequently see themselves as victimized and mistreated. The waif, in particular, re-victimizes herself through deprivation and self-sacrificing behavior. Angela describes this sense of being trapped by her own self-defeating behavior. The strong bird of my soul rises occasionally to flap wildly, beating his wings fiercely inside his cage until they are broken and bruised and bloody, then sinks back in his cage until he has the energy to try to fly again. Linehan explains that borderlines 
often find it difficult to believe that they deserve anything other than punishment and pain. Angela's words are reminiscent of Charlotte Dupont's in a letter to her aunt. I suppose I am justly cursed. The waif feels cursed, destined for bad luck, misfortune, and suffering. She believes that she deserves to suffer. Uses fantasy to escape reality and longs for a fairy tale life. The waif typically has a rich fantasy life. Her tragic, recurrent experiences of victimization leave her longing for a magical escape, for a fairy tale ending to her misery. Her fantasy life is locked in her heart or in a private journal. Although she dreams of marrying Prince Charming, she chooses men who are emotionally unavailable. Her children may become cynical, or they may share her sadness about her despair. An entry in Angela's journal reads, I wonder if I have a soulmate. Such a delicious thought, that we all have a mental twin, my good angel, my prince, my knight. Will you love me enough to accept all of me, the good, the bad? The waif's use of fantasy provides an escape from her desolate world. Louise Kaplan explains, Exalted when they imagine that they are completely filled up and perfectly held, they feel humiliated and worthless when they fall from grace. They idealize those whom they can coerce into becoming the all-giving, perfectly holding partner who will sustain their image of self-perfection. Unfortunately, idealization quickly turns to disillusionment because real people are imperfect and disappointment must be tolerated. Gives away, loses, or destroys good things. Good things don't last. Because the waif does not feel entitled to gratification, she may give to others what she herself needs. Waifs have an uncanny, unconscious ability to destroy or lose valuable possessions. Pervasive helplessness leads to carelessness, which reinforces the waif's belief that she does not deserve good things. She may forget to lock her car, lose her car keys, misplace her purse, misuse and break appliances, and inadvertently leave what she needs behind. Therapists may notice that used tissues often mark the waif's trail of tears. Trying to give the waif hope can feel hopeless. Charlotte Dupont's aunt once sent her a religious book, trying to provide a source of hope. Charlotte wrote to her aunt, Don't think me ungrateful. It would be sheer hypocrisy for me to read the words of Jesus when I have not entered a church or opened a Bible for ten months and never intend to again. I suppose I am justly cursed, but then it is hard to have nothing to care for and nothing to look forward to. However, I am pretty well accustomed to it. The waif suffers from an inability to hope because she does not expect good things to last. Waif mothers may also give things of value away because they believe others can better care for them. Angela understood why she did not expect good things to last. The brief happiness in her childhood was suddenly gone, and she blamed herself for her misery. Sadness felt safer than anger, and she resigned herself to a life of self-denial. Charlotte Dupont's rages wreaked havoc on her personal belongings. The stupor that followed her outbursts was most likely a dissociative state in which she experienced intense self-hatred, guilt, and shame. Her behavior depicts the waif's hopelessness. She gives up on herself suffers crying spells, depression, and panic attacks more frequently than rage. The borderline waif is like a butterfly with a sting because she is as delicate and vulnerable as she is biting and harsh. Her unhappiness is evident to those who are close to her. Crying spells are easily triggered by movies, articles, memories, casual conversation, or her own thoughts. Tears flow frequently and easily, coming and going without warning. Depression is her reliable companion. Panic attacks and waves of anxiety may be triggered by social situations, but most likely occur when competency must be proven. Although she may perform well in structured situations, the waif battles constant anxiety. Because she blames herself for her problems, the waif's anger is likely to erupt less frequently than her sadness and anxiety. She is more likely to become anxious, paranoid, and suspicious than to become aggressive with others. Her partner is more likely than her children to experience outbursts of rage. The waif's children may become immune to her tears and to her ups and downs in relationships. 
they may either minimize or discount her suffering or feel manipulated by her mood swings. Loss or abandonment can trigger psychotic reactions. Abandonment or rejection by her partner arouses rage in the waif as she seeks to annihilate the one who failed to love her perfectly. Psychosis in a waif may involve paranoid thoughts, irrational fears of persecution, and a terrifying sense of loneliness. Although the waif may experience psychotic rage, fear can also trigger the break with reality. When Charlotte Dupont's previously hostile mother-in-law offered to assist with the care of her children, Charlotte reacted with unbridled rage and then sank into depression. Charlotte may have interpreted her mother-in-law's offer as a suggestion that she was a failure as a mother. Her reaction, nevertheless, illustrates the waif's extreme vulnerability to criticism and susceptibility to psychotic episodes. Angela captures the essence of a psychotic break in this journal entry. Have I gone through the fire, and this is what's left on the other side. A nothingness, a barren, still, calm plain of nothingness. Nothing is good, nothing is bad, because all is nothing. I think except for my writing that I am or maybe partially experiencing a mild catatonia, a decompensation of self. I am not unhappy. How can you be unhappy when you do not feel? A pleasant state, actually, except I feel I cannot get out of bed. The waif's depression engulfs her and threatens her very existence. Charlotte Dupont was swept away from her own children by her despair. Her biographer explained, It was not so much that she neglected her children. She often had periods when she was passionately devoted to them. But sometimes she forgot their existence. The Waif Mother's Motto Life is too hard. Life is hard, but the waif communicates the message to her children that life is overwhelmingly hard, that it is hopeless to try to achieve goals. The waif tolerates life rather than enjoying it, and her children may thus adopt her hopelessness and feelings of inadequacy. They may feel shackled to their mother by separation anxiety or guilt. Compulsive self-sufficiency or unhealthy dependency may characterize their adult relationships. Because the waif's life is hard, her children's lives can be difficult. Adult children may assume responsibility for financial crises, medical bills, physical care, or housing, not knowing how much help is appropriate or how frequently they should visit. The waif's adult children may grow weary with guilt and worry. Loyalty conflicts can arise as adult children marry and have families of their own. Resentment may grow with time. Messages from the Waif Mother You'd be better off without me. I don't deserve your love. Don't need me because I can't help you. You are more deserving than I am. Nobody cares about me. My life is so much worse than yours. You are so lucky. Let me do that for you. I feel used. The waif identifies with other victims for whom life is hard. She may take in foster children or her children's friends and may choose disadvantaged others as partners. Although the waif's compassion for others is genuine, her children are ambivalent about it. On one hand, they may be proud to have a mother who is socially concerned and generous. On the other hand, they may resent what they had to give up. The waif's adult children struggle with entitlement issues, feeling either overly entitled or not entitled at all. Magical thinking and a sense of omnipotence can develop in the all-good child who assumes responsibility for the waif's welfare. An adult child recalled purchasing a new dress on the same day her mother was injured in a car accident. The daughter associated the act of self-gratification with her mother's accident and returned the dress to the store. Self-denial relieved anxiety because expressing her own needs felt dangerous as a child. The daughter of the waif had become the waif. Blinded by her own helplessness, the waif is unable to see the path of destruction she leaves behind or the road ahead that could lead her to safety. She can be difficult to treat and may shop for a therapist who offers sympathy rather than growth. 
Angela dropped out of treatment whenever she met a new partner. She held on to her fantasy of being rescued by an idealized partner and was frightened by the hope that therapy offered. The waif may terminate treatment just as she begins to feel better. Like a butterfly, she must be gently held in an open hand. Her therapist and children must feel free to let her go.